In the summer of 1863, Confederate General Braxton Bragg and his Army of Tennessee controlled Chattanooga. But by early September, Bragg realized he had been outmaneuvered by Union General William Rosecrans, and the Confederate Army had no choice but to abandon the city. Rosecrans thought the Confederates were retreating toward Atlanta. However, the Confederates had a surprise of their own. Bragg was not going to give up Chattanooga without a fight. At the Battle of Chickamauga, little went as planned, and thousands of men lost their lives. On September 18th, Bragg ordered a portion of his army to cross Chickamauga Creek ahead of Rosecrans and block the army's route back to Chattanooga. As these Confederates reached the creek crossing, they encountered unexpected resistance. Union soldiers guarded the crossings, and stubborn resistance by these soldiers hampered Confederate attempts to cross the bridges throughout the day. Finally that evening, overwhelming Confederate numbers pushed their way across the creek. The next day, September 19th, both armies funneled more and more troops into the battlefield. That night, Braxton Bragg reorganized his army and planned for a dawn attack to be launched by General John C. Breckinridge. Delays and mismanagement plagued the Confederate command, and the attack did not begin until mid-morning on September 20th. The Confederates, under the command of General Daniel Adams, poured around the left flank of the Union line, and Marcella Stovall's Floridian men crashed through the trees into the field. Their position is marked by the Florida State Monument. Across these fields, Stovall's and Adams' men charged, routing Beatty's brigade. The Confederates in this field it must have seemed like a victory was inevitable, but it was not without cost. Major Rice Graves, General Breckinridge's chief of artillery, was mortally wounded when he was struck in the stomach just behind Slocum's battery. The scene before you looks much like it did in September 1863. Although visibility in the forest was fairly good, up to 200 yards in some spots, troops had trouble maneuvering around the trees. The Federals built breastworks along this line using fence rails, logs, brush, rocks, and boxes. These breastworks were around knee to waist high and extended a mile southwest. The Confederates planned to turn the Federals left at this point and drive them southwest into the mountains, keeping them away from Chattanooga. Given the task in the sector was General Benjamin Hardin Helms. Defending the Federal line at this point was General John H. King's brigade. Due to miscommunication of orders, the Confederate attack, scheduled to begin at dawn, was delayed for nearly four hours. The delay cost the Confederates an element of surprise and also allowed the Federals to strengthen their breastworks. The attack by Helms Brigade began around 9.30 a.m., and the Federal line suddenly exploded with rifle fire. Helms' men were pushed back by this determined resistance, which ultimately forced the Confederates to attack again, and then, incredibly, a third time, but never succeeding in breaking the Federal line. During one of the attacks, General Helm was mortally wounded. Helm's death was felt all the way to Washington, D.C., where his brother-in-law, President Abraham Lincoln, greatly mourned him. Even though the two were on opposing sides, they remained close, and the President took Helm's death extremely hard. Looking through the woods into North Kelly Field, attacks by Breckinridge's two other brigades were initially successful. Union brigades later entered the field and pushed Breckinridge Confederates back with heavy losses. Firing then quieted along this line, only to resume around 12.30 p.m. when another abortive attempt was made to break the Union line.
At late evening, the Confederates broke through the Federal Brigade near this Alabama monument down Battle Line Road. Extending along Battle Line Road are some of the oldest monuments in the park. Placed here around 1893, they silently reflect the valor and courage of which they symbolize. Many of the monuments feature an acorn which was adopted by the Union Corps as their symbol because they stood sturdy as an oak tree in the fiercest storm along this line. To the east is the Georgia Monument, the tallest monument on the Chickamauga battlefield. Breckenridge's attack on the Union left on the morning of September 20th sent shockwaves down the Federal battle line. Couriers were dispatched to commanders along the Federal line requesting more troops be sent to help push the Confederates from their advanced position threatening the Union rear. Reynolds agreed that troops needed to be taken from the main line but wanted Rosecrans's approval before moving them. Rosecrans headquarters was full of activity. At the time the courier arrived to voice Brannon and Reynolds concerns, the commanding general had been awake for almost two days. Without seeing the situation himself, Rosecrans made a faithful mistake. He believed Brannon had already moved his soldiers out of position, creating a gap in the middle of the line. However, there was no gap. At 10.45 a.m., Rosecrans issued a one-sentence order to General Thomas J. Wood, whose Union troops were a few hundred yards to the south. The general commanding directs that you close up on Reynolds as fast as possible and support him. Because Wood saw that Brannon's men were still in position next to Reynolds, he asked his superior to help explain the confusing order. The two decided the order must be followed, and Wood started moving his men to the north. Meaning to plug the imaginary gap in his line, Rosecrans had opened up a real gap. Unknown to the Union commanders, the real threat was not to the north where Wood was headed. Instead, the real threat was a powerful force of Confederates waiting in the woods just beyond where the Georgia Monument now stands. Like most families on the Chickamauga battlefield, the Brothertons lived the lives of small farmers in a log cabin similar to the one you see here today. In the field to the west, at the wood line, General Wood's Union Division was ordered at 10.45 a.m. on September 20, 1863, to move north to support General George H. Thomas. But before the troops could fill the gap in the Union line, the yells of thousands of Confederates pierced the air as they poured across Lafayette Road and through the gap. The breakthrough split the Union Army. Union Army Commander William S. Rosecrans was caught up in the retreat. 
leaving General George Thomas as a senior Union officer on the field. A grave disaster was in the making for the Army of the Cumberland. Union Colonel John T. Wilder's brigade of mounted infantry, armed with Spencer repeating rifles, halted some of the attacking Confederates. The Lightning Brigade had the only Union success on this part of the field. Today, the Wilder Brigade Monument stands near the spot where Colonel Wilder's brigade went into action. The monument stands 85 feet tall and was built on the site of widowed Eliza Glenn's cabin, which served as General Rosecrans's headquarters on September 19th. The home was destroyed by fire during the battle, leaving the 23-year-old widow homeless. This is the cabin of George Washington Snodgrass. At the time of the battle, the farm consisted of a larger cabin and several outbuildings, and the field planted with corn. As disaster struck the federal right on September 20th, many of the men began fleeing north as individuals or as semi-organized units to this area. At this point, General George H. Thomas, the highest ranking federal officer still present on the field, assumed command of this patchwork line but had very little time to prepare before the Confederates launched their first attacks. Fighting raged to near sunset when Thomas received orders from Rosecrans to withdraw from the field. Thomas began by ordering his troops who had defended Kelly Field throughout the day to withdraw. With the withdrawal of Thomas from the field, the Battle of Chickamauga came to an end. Thomas's stand saved the Federal Army from complete disaster and earned himself the nickname, The Rock of Chickamauga. But the disaster that befell the Army could not be overlooked. In the following weeks, General Rosecrans was relieved of command and General McCook and Crittenden faced court-martials. Now under the command of General Ulysses S. Grant, in late November, the Federal troops delivered a devastating blow to the Confederates. The battles of Orchard Knob, Lookout Mountain, and Missionary Ridge were won, thus deciding the fate of Chattanooga once and for all in favor of the Federal forces. These victories opened the gateway to the Deep South. 